Welcome to today's Barnes Takeout. I'm Amy Gillette. I'm a collections researcher at the Barnes Foundation. Now today we're going to head into gallery number four, um, a little gallery on the first floor filled with all kinds of paintings, decorative objects from a bunch of different places and times. We're going to zoom in on this painting over here by the door right down here entitled The Offering, painted in right about the year 1915 by the American artist Charles Prendergast. And it's placed um, right underneath this exquisite image of the Virgin Mary with Christ Child, um, as well as you can see a slice of this Last Supper painting, both of them painted in Germany um, toward the end of the 15th century. And I mentioned that because, um, here, let's actually go look at the offering a little more closely. Because medieval religious imagery, um, in this case, the Annunciation of the Archangel Gabriel to the Virgin Mary that she was going to give birth to Christ, was the starting point um, for this image of the offering by Prendergast. Um, although the subject matter, he's generalized to be more kind of loosely spiritual. And so what we see is this angel um, appears to be a feminine angel offering this basket of, of flowers, of perhaps fruit, to this woman over here that we see in profile. And she has this bouquet that's like this spray of kind of daisy type flowers and is grasping a sort of tulip, I suppose, over here. And then We've got this um, kind of Italian Renaissance style cherub figure down here playing a, a pipe. And I think my favorite detail of the entire painting is this just lovely round, very toddler-like cheek of his, plus his tousled hair, little wings. And then over here, you see this um, fawn grazing on the grass. And down toward the bottom, we've got flowers, dots, ducks, kind of um, stylized flora, the artist's signature, um, CP for Charles Prendergast down there. And then the background's pretty abstracted except for this like one single um, cloud um, floating up here. So who was the artist and why was, why was he painting this subject in, in this way? So the artist, Charles, um, was born on the 27th of May in 1863. So today is his birthday, um, as it is actually mine as well, um, a, a different year though. And he was the, the younger brother of Maurice Prendergast, whose beach scenes you heard about on, um, on another takeout. And they were born in Canada, but really got their careers going in the city of Boston, where Charles was involved with the arts and crafts movement. This was an artistic movement um, that had begun in England, spearheaded by figures such as John Ruskin, William Morris, who looked to the art um, of the mostly medieval past as a kind of antidote to the challenges of modernity, such as mass production and the kind of um, what they thought of as like depersonalization or um, dehumanization of um, of objects that could come, objects and people that could go along with it. Um, and then in, um, in 1914, the brothers actually moved to New York City, um, right by William Glackens, who was a good friend of Barnes and a famous American painter. But um, Charles started painting in Boston around 1912 when he was already almost 15. And for paintings like this, he took inspiration um, from the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, um, the newly opened cloisters in New York City, um, the Met Museum where um, Pierpont Morgan's medieval collection was on display at the same time, and um, brought so many of them together in one painting. And so actually we can see um, perhaps medieval Persian painting in the super elegant um, profiles of the figures, medieval manuscripts perhaps, um, in the way he's bordered this down here. But um, Prendergast's number one artistic reference was the art of um, late medieval, early Renaissance Italy. So we're talking Italy in the 1300s going into the 1400s. And much of the reason why was um, there was um, a book published in Florence right around the year 1400 by an artist called Cennino Cennini called The Book of Art, a libro dell'arte, sometimes called The Craftsman Handbook, The Craftsman's Handbook. 
um, translations of which were super popular amongst the arts and crafts movement. Um, and she, you know, talked about all ways to make all kinds of different art. Um, and Prendergast, as we know from his, his notes, took his um, recommendations for panel painting um, pretty thoroughly to heart. So I'm going to read to you what, um, what Prendergast wrote. He wrote, the surface of the panels are covered with a material called gesso. It was used by the early Italian primitives when they used a wood panel. I prepare my panels with the same medium. And while the gesso is still damp, the composition is cut into the surface with a tool. The gold work is prepared separately and laid on gold sides with water and finally burnished and toned. Now, um, somebody who um, saw Charles in action said when he was doing this, he looked kind of like he was giving himself a haircut at the same time as he was slicing bread. But let's take a look at what this um, technique looks like. And so he says he lays on the plaster that you can see exposed here, um, incised the composition with some kind of tool. Let's take a closer look at the wing over here painted it, and then he um, lays on the gold leaf uh, with an, a sort of adhesive and then burnishes it so it's um, so it's shinier. And one of the great things about its display at the barns, it's, um, is that it's on the same wall as, um, as another work of art that was painted in Florence, right around the year 1400, by an artist called Gerardo Starnina, this little bust of a music-making angel. So same time and place as Chinino was writing his Craftsman Handbook. And we can see, let's zoom in and see. Um, you can probably see that it is on panel um, with the composition incised, although Starnina has applied this reddish material called bowl, then he would lay on um, the, the gold leaf and then um, stamp it. You can see the different stamp patterns in the angel's halo over here, um, plus other inc incisions with this kind of um, vegetal pattern. So we've got for, for Charles, a quasi religious scene, medieval techniques. And Charles did actually write about um, the kind of effect that the techniques were supposed to have on the artist. Um, I'm going to read to you now a quote about wood carving, his medium that he really worked in before painting um, and still kind of carried out in his images. And he said, wood carving is a beautiful art. Its beauties are all of a quiet kind. The craftsman should not try to imitate nature, but must adopt and modify the forms of nature to suit the method of the work and carry out his fancy. So what we have for Charles is the material of the of the wood, of the paint, of the gold, the medieval technique, to kind of spiritualize both the artist and the onlooker in um, in a in a rather broad way, and um, as a kind of offering of materiality to spirituality or a sublimation of the material. And I think to go back to thinking about this next to the Starnina, um, let's go back to the display of the gallery. One of the super interesting things um, about the barns is that we can see this reciprocity between medieval and modern, um, where we get to see not only how um, artists like Prendergast and many others made use of art from the medieval past or other periods and places, but oddly how the modern, um, in a way, impacts the medieval insofar as Albert Barnes um, collected modern works of art. That, well, I, I should specify it. He collected the offering um, in the 19 teens and the medieval paintings in here much later. And so Prendergast work ends up um, govern governing the medieval objects he chose as well as how he displays them. And so uh, today I'll leave you with a thought of what are other ways in which today we might learn from the past um, in order to pivot toward a, a better future? So that's it for today's Takeout. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. 
Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.